Hey everyone, here I am in our studio. Now I did leave um, in module zero, the links for our studio and our, now you don't have to get them right yet, but the goal of this video is just to go over this week's information related to quantitative research. But I figured, hey, why not do it in our studio? Because I think people are able to understand it better. At least that's the feedback that I got. Now, these are all what we call um, uh, data sets. Some are in my little shiny thing. What the hell? Well, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I just name them funny things like mother. Uh, but anyways, these are the data sets in Excel. And I'm going to show you how to bring it up. So we're going to do, um, as you can see, there's a lot. Ice cream, that's the easiest thing. And it says right here, import data set. So you just import the data set. Now, if it's the first time you're doing this in our, our studio, remember, our, the they're the statistical environment whereas our studio is the user-friendly studio. So you basically, it'll say, you know, download reader. So you need that in order to upload it, but I already have it on there. And you basically just import this. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it now, but this comes up. So what's the value here? Well, one of the most basic ideas of quantitative methods is independent dependent variable, like the little article or chapter said. So you basically have C-O-N-S, that's consumption of ice cream, that's income, price, and temperature. So consumption is the dependent variable, that's the result. Does income or does price or does temperature affect the consumption. That, in a nutshell, is what we're going to do. So that is exactly what you're looking at. So all you have to do for this quick video is understand what the independent and dependent variable is. So what they're looking for is what we call, I mean, this is basic right before regression analysis, is correlation. And R has all these different functions and it has packages. Uh, in order to install a package, again, this won't be on the first quiz, but you go to install. Now you just write things, right? Like look at install packages and then you can install any package and you install a package. Let's do deep liar, although it's already installed. I'll just do it again. You do in quotes, deep liar. So that's deep liar. You're a deep liar. All right. So there you go. You're installing the package. And it could take a while, as this is. There it goes. And then I download it. And then next, you get it out of the library. So there's library. And now I go to deep liar. Now, once you install it, you do not have to install it again. Should pop right up. Let me see. Deep, deep. Oh, that's why it's not popping up. I'm doing deep liar. There it goes. Deep liar. Now, every time you get out of R, that is cut it. This is an apple, so you'd cut it there. Um, you have to go to the library to get it, but you don't have to install it again. Notice there's no quotes in getting it out of the library. So I explained to the students. If you do get packages, you install it here with the quotes, and then you get it out of the library. Boom. And now we have it. And now what do these packages do? Packages do a whole host and broad spectrum of things. Some have data sets that we're going to work on. Others are giving us commands, which we're going to go over. And others do other things. So it's pretty cool. Like one of the things I like to use a lot is quant, tidy quant, which is more for finance. And then there are others. So that's what makes, remember our studio, the good thing about it is don't freak out. People start freaking out. Oh my goodness, I don't understand this. It's not difficult. If I can do it, anyone can do it. But you're just, you know, using this in a way that's uh, very, very uh, advanced, but yet at the same time, user-friendly and most importantly, free. Because anyone who usually teaches this class will, will make you buy a book. You do not have to buy a book. You don't have to pay for Stata. You don't have to pay for SPSS. It is all free. You can be in any country in the world 
maybe not North Korea, and use it. So let's just go back to the most basic thing is ice cream, right? Now, after I put this ice cream up, it's up here, right? And then these little boxes, you can practice. Boom, boom. Look at this small one. Nope. No, uh, no, I nada. I speak Spanish. Nothing, nothing. Let's go up here. Now there's nothing here. So you can play around with these to see. See, then it's just half and half. You can make your screen bigger. Right. And other things. So um, and you can make this. We won't get into this now, but you can also change this around. You can actually make a black background and other backgrounds, etc. But for now, what we're going to do is just do the attach it. So I have that data set. And I'm going to attach it. This is the data set ice cream and I attach it. Now, this is not on the exam or anything like that, because we're going to have a quiz um, on a Friday. They open on Fridays and then they close on Tuesday. So we're going to attach the data set. And now I know it. Now, all you got to do is do the three letter rule. I see you got it. Ice cream. So, you know, it's attached. So what we're going to do is basically the goal here is to understand the independent and dependent variable that will be on. And you won't have to run anything on R yet, but you will later. But the goal here is to understand you know, what is quantitative research about? One of the most basic things is correlation, right? Number one, correlation. And number two, the dependent and independent variable. The dependent variable is the result, in this case, the consumption you're measuring, right? Is ice cream being more or less consumed relative to the independent variable, which is the causal variable, income, price, and temperature? So what we'll do here is just the COR function, right? That's core. That's correlation. See, it's kind of logical. It's a function. Then you have two parentheses that come up. And you can put them in yourself. Like, let's say, for example, I go like this. And you want to put, uh, let's think of two. Now, the order in this case does not matter. It will later. But let's say, for example, the dependent variable first, consumption. You see it right there. You could just put it in. And then you have, let's say, for example, income. We'll do that one first. Income. Now, that's 0.04. That is basically saying there is no relationship. That's what we're measuring, the relationship between these two, between income and consumption, meaning income and consumption are not that related. Because think about it, the best and the strongest relationship you can have is one, right? This is 0 0.04. That's very far away. So a perfect, a perfect correlation is one, right? So you can have negative and positive correlations like we're seeing now. If you hit the arrow up, you can just go up and you don't have to write all that stuff again. So let's see consumption, right? Now let's take a look at the second one, price, right? Price, here it is. And you can see the color and stuff like that. You could write it in. Now there is a negative. Why? Because the more the price of ice cream goes up, consumption dips by 0.25. That's not too bad. That's not a strong correlation. I mean, a strong correlation depends on the question and what you're doing, but I'd say a strong correlation here would be seven, six, anything over 0.5. So 0.25 isn't much, but if you are a business owner, you might want to be aware of this because it has a negative. It's saying basically it is moving down the consumption of ice cream relative to price. Notice the data set only has 30, 30 um, data points, right? And these are all connected. So that's just the numbers. But consumption is related to this income, this price, this temperature, this consumption related, et cetera. So it goes across. And now there's a third independent variable. That's the causal, the temperature. Does temperature cause an increase or decrease in consumption. So let's do it. I'm hitting the arrow back up. It's actually got to be right there, and we'll, I'll explain that later. So I'm just replacing price with temp. Now, TMP, they don't write the whole temperature there, but you see it here. All right, 0.775. That's a pretty strong correlation, right? It's basically saying that with the higher temperature, 
there's a more consumption of ice cream. Why would a business owner or anyone else, of course, we're going to do a lot of social justice and things like this. This is just a basic data set to understand quantitative methods. So what they're saying is the higher the temperature, the more likely consumption of ice cream is going to happen. Okay, that's it for this. So that way it's just measuring the relationship between consumption right? Income, price, and temperature. Consumption by itself is the dependent variable. That is the result. Income by itself, which is doing a regular correlation with one variable, is the, the uh, independent variable. Price is the independent variable. And temperature is an independent variable, meaning the causes, right? But we don't know if it's the cause yet. We just say independent variable because we don't know. And it seems like income and price are not that strong. The price seems to be, you know, 0.25 is not bad. So if you're an owner of a business and you're increasing the price and you do see a dip, you might want to watch out for increasing the price. And then temperature... As temperature gets higher, then you, you're going to sell, if you're the business owner, more ice cream because C-O-N-S is the consumption of ice cream. So that's really all we did right now is the independent dependent variable, right? And I hope this example gets you the dependent variable is consumption. The independent variables, that is to see if there's a relationship, the, a cause is income, price, and temperature. So this is, in a nutshell, the most basic um, understanding of quantitative methods. And what's interesting about this as well, we just didn't do it in a book. We did it in a um, package. And I'll leave, if I use ice cream as a data set, I'll, I'll leave the data set within the module because each one will have, each week will have a module. So this is one of the most basic concepts of quantitative research. And then when we start getting into it, you know, you want to think about more socially oriented things. Think of a question like, does gender, male or female, just saying those two binary um, gender variable, uh, is it related to income? Meaning do men or women in the same position make more or less? And we'll be able, we'll be running things like that later on. So there's a lot of questions you can ask with this, you know, does the COVID vaccine decrease the likelihood, because we're dealing with kind of probabilities here, the likelihood that uh, someone suffers from the uh, characteristics of COVID or does it completely stop them getting from COVID? And you can do real research on that. Um, so we're going to see a lot of interesting data sets here, many related to social justice, some fun, like the Titanic data set. That's, I mean, it's not fun. I mean, we're going to see whether uh, class, there's three classes of uh, people on the on the Titanic data set. And... Um, um, gender, whether those are variables in whether or not you would die on the Titanic. And that's of a true data set. It's not like made up. We're going to do massacres in Colombia, my kind of research area and other things. But this is just basic correlation. We're not even into regression yet. And all you need to know this is from the independent dependent variable correlation. And then on the quiz, I can ask you, oh, we ran correlation, right? On... Um, income and consumption, is there a correlation? No, it was only 0 0.04. That's very low. Was there a correlation? Yes, a negative correlation with price, meaning the higher the price, the less likely people are to eat, to consume ice cream, but it's not that strong, 0 0.25, when the, the perfect correlation is one. And then you have a negative one, as you would see in that. Uh, correlation temperature, very good correlation at point. 775, which is basically 0.8, which is a very strong correlation. So I hope you understood that. Leave any comments you have in the community forum. Uh, these are my data sets. There's the Titanic one and others, and we're going to be doing more. So um, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed this video. I don't know if you enjoyed it, but I hope you understand it. I don't know how much you enjoy it. Uh, and thanks so much for coming out, and I hope to hear from you.